Ladies and gentlemen, it is finally time to wrap it all up. Welcome to the last episode of Transistors. Hello and welcome back to Transistors. It is finally time to wrap up the entire series. So today I thought we would take some time to go back and to revisit everything we've learned to put it all back together. So at the very beginning, we learned what transistors were. You know, we started off with the simplest. What is NPN? What is PNP? And yeah, we learned that, well, thanks to the magic of semiconductors, we are able to create a virtual switch. That's essentially what our transistors are. We have a current that can be switched on and off with another piece of current. And that's what makes it so powerful. Then we spent quite a few episodes trying to build logic gates using our transistors, starting with the simplest, the NOT gate. We saw how interesting it was, you know, using an NPN transistor versus a PNP transistor, you know, how different these circuits actually looked. And this difference was further emphasized when we actually went on to look at our intermediate gates, and or NAND and NOT. We saw how, well, with NPN or PNP transistors, we could still build any of these gates. But there were very interesting similarities and patterns that existed between different pairs of these gates. Again, here's the table that I showed you probably at the end of the either NAND or NOR episode, you know, where we brought it all together. The differences in design between our NPN and PNP transistors meant that, well, Things had to be laid out slightly differently, but in a manner that was interestingly consistent, as shown in the table. Up to this point, every gate we made could be constructed with just two transistors, but we took it a step further by using more transistors to build our XOR and XNOR gates. So these started to get a little bit complex. We didn't have time to sort of look into a pure NPN and a pure PNP version. So we looked at one in which these two were mixed, and we saw that we had to use four transistors each. These were a little bit more interesting because we had to sort of think out of the box, be a little bit more creative to, well, get our transistors to do what we wanted to do. So yeah, hopefully these were interesting exercises for you. Of course, up to this point, all we've been doing was trying to build logic gates using transistors. And in fact, yeah, even if we were to end the series at this point, you should be able to see how powerful transistors are because they are able to build logic gates and we know what logic gates can do. They're basically the building blocks of our modern computers. Computation at the end of the day can be expressed in terms of gates. What we've done is we've just broken it down to a simpler level. And despite that, sometimes gates are just too abstract, which is a surprising statement to make. In fact, we saw this when we did our T flip-flop when learning logic gates. We saw that we could use two logic gates and basically hook them up in a certain way. And what we could do is we could actually have it store one bit of memory. If we were to implement that using transistors, we would have to essentially build two entire gates, and that's not very efficient. However, as it turns out, we didn't have to. We moved on to look at a circuit called a bistable multivibrator, which using just two transistors, we were able to implement the exact same thing. Now, we don't have to go through all that trouble to build two gates just to have our storage capability. We were able to do that with just two transistors. Moving off the back of that, we looked at a pulse detector circuit. And this is another thing that tends to be neglected when we're talking about logic gates and logic circuits because, well, we have a clock pin, right? And we assume that it does the right thing. But when we actually delve in to look at how a pulse detector circuit is built, which we did with a capacitor, we realized that, hey, it's not magic. It's just electronics once again. With our pulse detector circuit in mind, we built a fairly complex circuit, which was more importantly, not a stable circuit. So what this means is we needed our pulse detector to basically, well, smooth out a long high state into just a short, sharp pulse. And yeah, in our demo, we saw that it worked. We had to use a capacitor with a very low capacitance, 
But yeah, with it, we were able to generate that very short pulse to trigger off our circuit. And that brings us to today. What we've seen is, well, I guess a lower level of abstraction than we would normally hear about. I mean, if you're a computer scientist, this part doesn't even really come up in your you know, computer science curriculum. Usually people go to gates and they stop there. So hopefully this has been an interesting, I guess, behind the scenes look uh, into what your logic gates are actually doing under the hood. Transistors and their related components, you know, like the capacitors, your power detector circuits, these are very versatile, these are very powerful, and yeah, there are in fact many other applications that we haven't had time to cover. Even transistors themselves, um, the way we've described it, you know, talking about it like a switch, is a oversimplified way of thinking about things. Transistors have so many other applications, you can actually use them as an amplifying circuit. There's so much you can do. So yeah, really in this series, we've barely scraped the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more that could be talked about. But hopefully what I've covered would be the most relevant to computer science, computing, programming in general. So hopefully you found it useful. Anyway, this wraps it all up for the Transistor series. I hope you've liked the videos, and yeah, your regularly scheduled programming will continue every Wednesday. Thank you very much for watching the Transistor series. Until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with Nerdverse.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.